It's time for the Nebraska Men's Basketball Coaches Show. On the right side to Hoiberg, right to left, top of the circle, reverses it off the throw. CJ, three is good! Got it! Bang! All right! CJ Wilcher is on fire! Lawrence on the other end lays it up. Shot blocked by Williams! Into the hands of Lawrence! The baseball pass and the jam! The jam Ola by Gary on the other end! Fighting Hawks with the basketball. And in the passing lane with a steal as Hoiberg jumped in front of everybody. Puts it up on the other end. Got it. Hoiberg gets Nebraska shot in the arm. Defense turns into offense for Sam. Tominaga wants to go one-on-one -on -one against Reed. The big. The crossover. The step back. The three by Casey. Got it. Got it. Got it. Got it. Got it. Got it. Huskers putting on a show tonight here at PBA. Now with Fred Hoiberg. Here's your host, Greg Sharp. Thank you. Welcome to the program. The head coach with us for the hour tonight. If you want to be a part of the program via text, 402-413-2400. The Huskers registered their 17th victory of the season on Saturday, a 20-point win over Michigan, 79-59. Congratulations. That one had to feel what, pretty good. It was. It was a great game. It was uh, exactly the kind of game uh, we needed heading into our bye week. It, it finished off a really tough Ooh. schedule with a lot of games in a short amount of time. So to have that one um, where we got off to an unbelievable start, that's what I was most proud of after two tough road games, losing the one to Illinois in overtime. You know, certainly played well enough to win that game, had a one-point lead, and unfortunately committed a foul there to, uh, to allow Domas to hit the free throw to send it to overtime. I was really proud of the effort, and I just thought we were fatigued against Northwestern. I thought early on they set the tone. They came out. They were the aggressors. <clears throat> you know, I give our guys credit for fighting back. You know, we made it a close uh, game, cut that thing back to nine after being down 20 about midway through that second half, and then had to bounce back again with a uh, earlier game, with the 530 game on uh, Saturday. But we had an unbelievable crowd, and I thought that really fueled us, and our guys got off to a really good start. The one thing about that Michigan team, Greg, they in, and, and we talked about how dangerous that team was coming off a big win over Wisconsin at home, and in 12 of their league games, um, uh, their 12 games, 10 of them they had a lead at halftime. So they had played some really good stretches of basketball, and they played their most, coming off their most complete game of the year, uh, knocking off a very talented Wisconsin team. So it was important for us to go out and set the tone early in that game, and that's exactly what we did. Got up 30, was not happy with how we finished that half. I, you know, they went to a little bit of a zone. It slowed us down, but we still had some wide open shots that we didn't take, drove it into the pile, missed a couple layups, and then allowed them to hit two threes at the, uh, at the end of the half. And that made it a 20-point game, which obviously is a lot different than 26 or 30. And, you know, they come out and go on a run. Now you're in, now you're in a tough battle the rest of the way. But, you know, I give our guys credit in the second half. They went out and extended that thing up to 26 pretty much right away. And then it was right around that 20 to 24 uh, pretty much the rest of the way. So really, really good performance uh, by our guys. And, again, an unbelievable start. That stretch that we had offensively was about as good as we've been. And I thought our defensive rotations were as good as they've been in a long time. And the guys carried over the game plan. We won the battle of the boards. Uh, we turned it over less than 10 times, and uh, just a really complete game by our guys. And you forced 14 turnovers. That's to the credit of your defense. Okay, so you, you, I knew you were concerned coming off the Northwestern game about fatigue. What Did you do something different between then and Saturday to kind of get the guys off their feet a little bit, or what? We did. We had two very light days of prep. We, we, uh, the day after, we got home late. That, that was an 8 o'clock game at Northwestern. So you walk in your door at 2.15, 2.30, and then uh, we push practice back to an evening uh, practice. So we went in and, and had a good long film session, uh, had our cleanup, which we do every game. Whether we win or lose, we always have a cleanup from the previous game, and then moved on and put the game plan in, and then got the guys off their feet. Really didn't let them do anything else. And then we came in uh, the next morning and had a good sharp uh, practice. Didn't go long, but we went intense. And, uh, you know, a lot of no contact, a speed type practice. And I thought our guys' legs, and you look at Josiah, he was coming off a really tough performance, uh, you know, as, as he talked about against Northwestern with zero rebounds. And he went out from that very first possession and set the tone for us. We had 16 offensive rebounds in that game against Michigan. And it was really Josiah that got us off. He got two of them on the first possession and went and dunked it off his, you know, his off leg uh, you know, to get us on the board. And you know, that just got us going. It, it had everybody else uh, excited. But you know, it, just, it was one of those games where early on uh, everything went right for us. And I was proud of him. Uh, for coming out and uh, you know something that we need to build off of the, that the stretch uh, that we had and in, in the in the really good basketball that we played if we continue on with that we're going to have a good rest of the year do you see that kind of effort out of Josiah at Josiah practice 
Yeah, I mean, the guy's never off, and that's the thing. Even when he needs limited reps, he doesn't want it. He, wa he always wants to be out on the floor. He wants to set the tone. Uh, he does so much extra work, and we've talked to him about, you know, at times, you know, more is, isn't always better, and, you know, he has to, you know, understand uh, where his body is. He had the off-season ankle surgery, and, uh, you know, he did. He did a really good job of taking care of his body, getting in the cold tubs, heading into that game against Michigan, and I really thought it paid off for him. So, you know, I talked to the guys a lot about this. You know, our schedule's basically been game two days, game two days, game two days. It's been pretty much like that the entire conference season. Now you get the, the bye week, and what we did, how we're going to manage this week, is we gave them off on Sunday. Uh, a lot of our guys were at the game uh, to see the women knock off Iowa, which was unbelievable. You know, so happy for Amy and those girls. They did an, uh, just incredible job you know, fight and resiliency and, and, and winning that game. And a lot of our guys uh, were there. I think Josiah was right in the middle of the court storming. <laughs> I'm sure he was. Yeah, yeah. but it was, uh, you know, it was fun for our guys to be there and, and supporting um, the women's team. And then uh, uh, today we went a lot of skill work. We did a lot of fundamentals. We worked on some blockout type things uh, as far as the live portion of our practice. Then we'll take tomorrow off again and uh, get three good days of preparation for a very good Penn State team that poses problems. They play different than most teams in our league with their press. Uh, they're different defenses that they're going to run. Uh, but it's nice to have this week. And then the rest of the way, we, we have at least three days between games. We haven't had that all year. So it'll be good to have an off day after the game, a good hard physical practice, and then lighten it up the day before. You've gone with this bigger lineup the last couple of games. Why do you like that, and what does that allow you to do? Well, we like it based on what happened in the last game. It obviously did not pay off against Northwestern. And I think you saw what that group is capable of doing. I thought physically, uh, you know, early on in that game, we wore Michigan down a little bit. And that's what that lineup is designed to do. When you got Jawan on the perimeter and Josiah at the four, you should have two really good rebounders uh, out there and two guys that can guard, uh, you know, just from a straight physical standpoint. And then Rink, you know, he's out there battling, fighting every day. He's one that really is limited in practice based on what happened with the knee procedure. Uh, but he just continues to go out there and, he, and he's a warrior. He's fighting bigger, stronger, more athletic guys uh, every night. And, you know, I just give him a lot of credit for the way that he is battling down there low. But, you know, with Jawan and with uh, uh, with Josiah, and then you've got Bryce at 6'7", who's playing the point for us right now. You pretty much got size at every position with the exception of, of the shooting guard spot. But then Kese, you know, does so many things for us on the other end. So, you know, I've liked the way, I really like the way that it looked in the last game. And I like the way it looked for a lot of stre uh, the, the game against Illinois. Uh, you know, those guys were out there a lot together, and, and, uh, and I like the way it looked. In this league, you need to be big, right? I mean, this is in non-conference, maybe not as much some of the matchups, but pretty much night in and night out, you're dealing with big-bodied guys. Yeah, you are, and, and we're going to see it again with Penn, Penn State. State. Yeah, they've got great uh, positional size all across the board. So, you know, again, the thing that Josiah and Jawan bring on the defensive end is versatility as well. You can switch uh, with those guys, and they do a solid job of staying in front of the ball. So with the bigger lineup, it's meant Jamarcus has not started. You said on your TV show last Thursday that he, he kind of came to you and said, kind of suggested that this might be the way. You've got to love a guy that's willing to do that for the team. Yeah, he, I, I think he wanted to change up his rhythm a little bit, and, and I talked to him about that as well when we did end up making the change. And he, he just, he's playing relaxed basketball right now, and he's going out there, he's hunting his shot a little bit more as well with that second unit. And, you know, that's what Jamarcus has pretty much done his whole career. I thought he was good with the ball the other day, playing against uh, some of the pressure that we saw against Michigan with their 2-2-1 or 1-2-2 press uh, and getting the ball over and making solid decisions. So, you know, I think this change has been good for Jamarcus. And, you know, most importantly, uh, you know, he's playing very confident basketball right now. Well, it's been fun to watch him play. Casey had that monster game against Illinois. Maybe wasn't quite as good at Northwestern, but he seemed to really put it together pretty well for the other night against Michigan. Yeah, he did. And, you know, I, I think you saw, uh, you know, the swagger that Kese, uh has played with that people have fallen in love with, not only here in Nebraska, but I think all over, the, even in mm -hmm. other Big Ten arenas. I think people really enjoy watching Kese play because of the passion that he brings to the floor every time he steps on it. And, you know, you saw a couple times where they switched off a bigger guy on him, and we just cleared out. We called our switch attack offense, and he just backed up and, and knocked down a three. But he really got us going, and he had a great – one of my favorite possessions of the night is we ran a little crackback action for him, and he turned the corner and, and, uh, and threw it 
to a cutting Juwan. Juwan hit rink up at the top all by himself, and he, and he hit a three. It started with Bryce's pass and playing under control and not over-penetrating. Uh, but that's what Kese can do. Once uh, he hits a couple shots, people are out on him so much that that's going to open up a driving lane. And I thought we made a couple of really unselfish plays. Another one that stands out is when we hit rink in the pocket and he got Juwan slashing uh, to the basket for a dunk. dunk. Yeah, but it, it was just a really fun stretch of basketball, and it, it's what it's supposed to look like. Folks, Dorothy Lynch, Homestyle Light and Lean Dressing, Endless Flavorabilities. Second half, you weren't as dominant, but I thought it was a really good 20 minutes for Bryce. I thought Bryce took over some things. You ran some actions for him a little bit. And he could be a real tough matchup for teams, can he? Yeah, I, I really liked the way it looked when he got in the middle against their zone. And he caught that in there. He's probably our best mid-range. He and Kese. You know, Kese hit a couple tough shots uh, in that game late as well. But we got Bryce in the middle of it, and he made a couple nice plays, good passes out. Uh, but when he caught the ball, uh, you know, kind of that high post area, uh, you know, at the free throw line at the nail, I thought he made really good decisions. And he made a couple nice moves in transition where he really finished well. So I agree with you. It was good to see Bryce really kind of get it going when some of the other guys were struggling that had it going in the first half. Coach, one thing that's really impressed me with your team is they seem to sense when somebody's got it and they look for them. I mean, one night it is... KSA one night at CJ. The other night in the second half, it looked like it was obviously Bryce. Your team's pretty good at kind of finding those guys. Yeah, I agree with you. And, you know, a couple of games before that, Ohio State, it was rank when he had 34. Yeah. And, you know, we, we, we'll run certain actions for it, but you can't run a set every time down. And you're coming down in your flow. And we talked about it. When we are in transition, we have to hunt KSA, we have to hunt CJ. Those guys are shooting the ball at such a high clip. When Bryce gets it going, we've got to find him. And one play that, another play that really stands out the other night is KSA drove that thing in the middle of the paint, uh, came under control, came to a jump stop, and hit a streaking CJ coming down uh, you know, the left wing, and CJ knocks down a three. And those are the kind of plays that you love to see, not forcing it, uh, playing a contested uh, shot at the rim, which uh, you know, I think we were two for 11 the other night and contested rim twos. But when you can drive in there and collapse the defense, you've done your job when you draw two to the ball. And now it's about finding the right guy, if you, especially when you space the floor properly. All right, let's get some text worked in here. Mike says, Coach, unbelievable record at home and some close losses on the road. What can we do differently to start getting some of these road wins? Yeah, we just, it, it's, it's all about consistency. And, you know, the thing that we talk a lot about with our guys is when you're at home, and we've got one of the best home environments in the country, and, and that has really shown this year. Uh, when you're going through a tough time and going through a lull, uh, you've got 15,000 behind you to pull you out of that. And you can't, you don't have that in the road. We're all we got. And, uh, you know, we did a lot of really good things at Illinois. And that's one of the best teams in our league. They're sitting all alone at second right now behind Purdue. And, you know, if you can do it there, you should be able to do it anywhere. Uh, you know, a couple of the tough losses. We had the great win against Kansas State. You know, that was a really important win for us when, when you're going to look at this thing at the end of the year. Uh, unfortunately, we couldn't hang on against Rutgers, the game Jawan went down. Uh, you know, you lose an overtime there, and then you lose the overtime game at Illinois. And we've had a couple games where we just have not given ourselves a chance. Wisconsin, uh, Northwestern, uh, Iowa got away from us. Uh, Maryland went, got away from us. So we got to find a way. we got three opportunities left on the road, and uh, it's very important for us to get a couple of these. You mentioned the women's win yesterday. It reminded me of your Wisconsin game, where they were down 14 with 10 minutes to go, and they came roaring back. A little magic going on at PBA, Coach. Yeah, it was. And it started with, uh, with Coach Manning on Friday. They had an yeah. unbelievable win against Michigan, who had just knocked off Iowa. Um, you know, Kevin Jackson, who's an assistant coach on the Michigan staff now, he was at Iowa State, the head coach, when I was coaching uh, there uh, with the basketball team. And, um, you know, I know how... Uh, high those guys were after that win against Iowa. So to win uh, those early matches, I think five of those ones were kind of coin flip they were. early in the match. And uh, it was a lot of fun to watch that uh, on BTN. So that was fun to see, you know, Coach Manning and his team take care of business on Friday, set the tone for us on Saturday, and then the women to finish it off on, uh, on Sunday. For your Wisconsin game, Amy's win over Iowa, those big comebacks, how – that's a, that's a test of character, isn't it, for a team to not give up on a game even though you're down double digits in the second half of a game? I mean, that's remarkable to be able to do that. Well, it, in, in this business. Two quality teams, too. Two unbelievable teams, and it's all about handling adversity at this level. It's going to smack you in the face at some point during the game, and you just talk to your team until you're blue in the face about handling that the right way because if you don't, all it takes in this league, especially against teams like that, is a four- or five-minute stretch. If you're not right, you're going to get buried, and it's going to be pretty much impossible 
to get out of it. But if you keep going, you stick to your principles, you, um, uh, uh, you, know, you find a way to continue to go out there and execute. And, uh, and that's, that's what they did. It was so much fun seeing them battle back and uh, you know, pretty much uh, you know, shut down the best player in college basketball right now, Caitlin Clark. And I don't think she scored a point in the fourth quarter. So that was a phenomenal game plan, and, and I thought those guys really executed well. That was fun. PBA, a little court storming again for the women yesterday after you had it, have had it done twice. Can you explain what's going on in some of the games in the league right now? I mean, Wisconsin, who I think is a really good basketball team, they've lost four in a row now. It started with the loss here, and then you see a Rutgers all of a sudden kind of left for dead two weeks ago. They're playing good basketball. Penn State got off to a bad start. They're playing pretty well. What's going on in this league? Yeah, I mean, it just shows the parity top to bottom. And, you know, you look at Minnesota's game against Iowa yesterday. They're, they were up 20 in the second half, and Garcia uh, went down with an injury, and then Iowa comes back, and I think outscored them 42 to 20 or 40, uh, 44 to 20 the rest of the way and got a really uh, high quality win but that's what it is right now with our league and in you know michigan knocking off wisconsin uh, the 14th ranked team or pl uh, place team knocking off uh, at that time the second ranked team so you know just any given night anything can happen in this league and that's certainly showing penn state won three uh, had won three in a row uh, all by double digits two of those were on the road that they won by 15 and uh, uh, then they're win at home against iowa by 10 and yesterday they had was or, uh, Northwestern on the rope. So this is a team that's as hot as anybody in our league right now. And they play one more game. They play Wednesday and then, uh, you know, Saturday we're going to have to come out with great energy in an early game, an 11 a.m. start. All right, before we go to the break, Crypto King in our chat room for you, Coach. He wants to know who you think has made the most improvement since the beginning of the season? Yeah, that's a great question. I, you know, one guy that I think has made a lot of improvements is Matar. And, you know, he goes out and, you know, hits the three. Banked one in. Banked it in, yeah. <laughs> but it was, uh, you know, he's, he's really made a lot of strides. And, you know, I'm proud of the development and the work that he has put in. Eli, I think you saw the, his progression before he had the high ankle sprain, which, you know, those are hard to come back from. And he's fighting that thing uh, still. He's still not back with live action yet. Um, but, uh, you know, Jamarcus, I think, is playing some of his better basketball these last couple games as well. So, you know, the biggest thing, you know, those young guys especially, you want to see improvement. I think we've seen that with our two freshmen. Very good. Keep those questions and texts coming. 402-413-2400. That's our Woodhouse Auto Family Hotline. Woodhouse is your trusted auto partner. 20 brands, 20 convenient sales and service locations. We're making car buying on your terms. Visit us online at woodhouse.com. More with the coach coming up next. I'm Tom Osborne, former football coach and founder of the Teammates Mentoring Program. I'm recruiting for the team, and I want it to be the finest team in America. I'm looking for someone like you to be a teammates mentor, someone who is willing to reach out to a child and make a difference. Meeting with a student once a week at school can make an impact in their life and in the community. We want you to join our team. Go to teammates.org to apply today. Maybe your hometown celebrates long-standing Swiss traditions, cow chip throwing, or even classic car muscle. Everyone has a hometown, and every hometown has a festival. Senex wants to hear about yours. That's why we're launching the Hometown Throwdown. Tell us about your fest, and it could win $100,000. Learn more at SenexHometownThrowdown.com. Senex, powered locally. For generations, hardworking people have relied on Ford F-Series trucks to help grow businesses, communities, families, a legacy of capability and technology that's made Ford F-Series America's best-selling trucks 47 years straight. This is the next generation of Built Ford Tough. Now, get 1.9% financing for 72 months on a new 2023 Ford F-150 only at your Midwest Ford dealers. If you're an unconditional, wholehearted, and ever so loyal Husker fan, you deserve to pay like one everywhere you go. With the free FNBO Husker Visa debit card, fuel your fandom all season and beyond with a debit card just for you. It's free with any checking account from FNBO, the bank of Husker Nation. Get your free Husker Visa debit card at any branch or at FNBO.com slash Huskers. Member FDIC. Hit us up on the text line. Text 402-413-2400 with your Husker thoughts.
Did I forget something? No, just wanted to tell you I love you. Oh, don't forget to buckle up. Drive safe. I will. Love you too. Someone is counting on you to buckle up. Paid for by the NDOT Highway Safety Office. At Groundworks, we take great pride in helping our Nebraska neighbors keep their homes healthy. From repairing foundations to waterproofing basements to fixing crawl spaces or lifting concrete driveways. We'd like to think our customers choose us because of our attention to detail or the fact that we're the nation's leading foundation solutions provider. What gives our customers the most comfort is we're right here in Nebraska. Visit Groundworks.com for a free estimate. Groundworks, foundation solutions crafted with pride the official foundation company of the Huskers. I just remember leaving that day feeling absolutely exhausted. I was sick and tired of living that double life. Mike is a former problem gambler. The anxiety, the depression is real. You start thinking about the money, the, where that could have went to. It's never enough. I could win $10 million today and I'd go back and try to win 20 tomorrow. Help for problem gambling is free for Nebraskans and their families at lifeafterbet.com. Hey Huskers, it's a new day in Nebraska. Manzer Equipment, Mertz Farm Equipment, and West Point Implement of Columbus have teamed up as True Ag and Turf. Coach Rule is bringing innovation and high performance standards to Husker football, and True Ag is doing the same to your farm with game-changing Fent equipment. As Big Red establishes power on the field, True Ag and Turf does the same in the field by welcoming Fent to Nebraska. Farming today is a combination of hard work, innovation, and partnerships to help keep us moving forward. Sap Brothers Petroleum has provided us with fuel, propane, and lubricants on the farm for many years. For over 52 years, Sap Brothers has been a reliable partner to thousands of farmers across our great state. We work hard to make sure our customers have the most reliable supply, provided in the safest manner and at the most competitive price. Trust Sap Brothers Petroleum to protect your equipment and keep your farm fueled. Sap Brothers is proud to be an official partner of Huskers Athletics and to serve Nebraska farmers and Husker fans across America's heartland. Hi, this is Husker National Champion and Super Bowl champ Tony Veland. Throughout my football career, chiropractic care helped my athletic performance on the field and kept me in the game. Today, regular chiropractic care keeps me healthy and active to do the things I love. Chiropractic is safe and effective for all ages. Make chiropractic your first choice to reduce pain, improve your mobility, and feel better naturally. It works for me, and it can work for you too. Learn more at NebraskaChiropractic.org. Stay active with chiropractic. We're back inside our Huskers Radio Network Broadcast Center, sponsored by Acres. They are the Midwest's premier John Deere dealers, supplying the equipment and service to advance agriculture and much more Acres solutions for every field. Greg Sharp back with the head coach of the Corn Huskers, Fred Hoiberg, here for a few more min minutes with us tonight. 402 413 2400. Art in Los Angeles on our text line said, Coach, this team is packed with great athletes. There's one player that stands out to me. This player is truly awesome. He wears the number one every time this player is on the court. The Huskers gain momentum. I'd love to hear more about this player. He's my favorite Husker. Who's number one? Sam Hoiberg. Oh, <laughs> yeah. He's uh, yeah. I listen. I'm I'm proud of Sam. I, I agree. He he really. You know that play he made to save the ball uh, the other day after following his own shot. You know it's just kind of who Sam is, and he's just he's such a competitive kid. It's how he's always been. Uh, he's got an identical twin brother, Charlie, who is going to TCU. And they used to fight like dogs uh, growing up, and they were so ultra competitive. And then Jack, older brother, played at Michigan State, working for the Spurs now. Uh, you know, he was a good influence on those guys, would pick on them a little bit, rile them up. But yeah, the competitive juices that those guys have always had uh, on the golf course, you know, whatever it is, it, um, you know, it's just, it's great. It, it's, it's easier to try to calm them down, which we had to do a lot <laughs> with those guys growing up, as opposed to having to kick them in the butt to try to, you know, light a fire under him but you know Sam you know I just look back at some of the key wins we've had with the Michigan State how well he did it on Tyson Walker and you know Garden Bowie for a stretch in that Northwestern game at home in, in the big win and uh, you know just the plays that he makes those hustle plays you know we talk a lot about offensive rebounding and you know Sam uh, we, we showed our team you know each one of their rebounding rate and Sam's is actually one of the higher uh, rebounding rate in the team even though he's one of the smaller uh, mm -hmm. guys on a roster so you know it's all about heart in that and that kid has it and you know that's that's what I'm really proud of him about and uh, it's been fun to see his success after really not knowing I mean he probably wouldn't have gotten a chance had we not had those injuries 
a year ago to Bandamel into, into Jawan. And then Sam gets thrown in the lineup in that next game against Northwestern, and he was as good as anybody in the floor, and he followed that up with a 15-point effort at, uh, at Maryland. And, you know, after that, he made the big steal to help us beat uh, Maryland at home and uh, made another big play at the end of the Wisconsin game, uh, a steal on a high-low play. So I'm just, you know, it's fun to see the success that he's had, and, you know, hopefully he can continue on with that and hit some shots for us here down the stretch. Next question for you, Coach. What are some positions you think you'll be targeting in the off season? Well, I, I'm excited about uh, the two guys that we already have signed. Uh, you know, Braden Frager, I think, played as well. Uh, you know, as a game this season, he had 33 points in his last one um, in a game I think against North Star, uh, where he played very well. It's been great to see him. Uh, you know, come into a lot of games with his family, and you know, I think he's going to uh, be a favorite being a hometown kid. And then Nick Janowski is having a phenomenal season. He had a 45-point game against their crosstown rival, you know, not against one of the lower-level teams in the league. He had that against one of the best teams in the state and then scored over 2,000 points in high school. That's hard to do, Greg, to score over 2,000 points. But, uh, you know, people are going to love him. The kid starts his day at 4 a.m. He gets up and gets his first workout in. Even during the season, he gets up and does that. Uh, his passion uh, for the game is energy and just a high, high level shot maker. So we're really excited uh, about those two guys coming in, especially losing Kase, uh, you know, losing Josiah, um, you know, and, and, uh, and Boogie. And, you know, we'll see what happens with the rest of our, of, of our roster. But, uh, you know, as far as everything else, I mean, we're obviously going to have to replace some really good players. Uh, you know, like I said, Nick and, and um, uh, you know, certainly uh, will give us a, a replacement for Kase, freshman. You don't know if they're going to be ready right away. Braden, obviously, is, with his athleticism and size, he's, got, he's every bit of 6'6". Six, six. Uh, but we're going to have to get some size on the roster to, to replace what Josiah has given us, and, and we will. You know, we'll, we'll have some good names, whether they're younger players or, or in the transfer portal. Uh, you know, to help replace what Josiah has given us this year. All right, John in Omaha for you. Coach, how much of hustle is coached? How much of it is recruited? Go Big Red. Yeah, great question. It, you know, a lot of it is when, when we kind of talked as a staff after the season and what that team was all about a year ago, uh, you know, I think it was a team that our fan base was proud of, the way that they fought and the way they handled adversity after the injury and finishing with the best record in the Big Ten in the month of February, and a lot of that was heart, and it was hustle, and, you know, guys diving on the floor, and that was without two of the guys early that really gave us a defensive identity. You know, when you look at that early success that we had, Bandamel and Juwan, you know, those two guys really were the catalyst on that defensive end of the floor, and then they go out, and we really had to kind of flip how we played, but that gave Jamarcus a great chance. It gave Sam a great chance to come in there and show what they can do, and a lot of their success last year, I thought, just had to do with playing hard. So we really wanted to look at that when we were uh, constructing this roster. And when you look at uh, our frontline guys uh, that we brought in with Rink and Josiah, I, that's what's made them who they are. They were both second in their respective leagues in rebounding. Uh, Bryce Williams, you know, certainly is a guy that's had success and, uh, and, and plays, uh, plays hard. So, you know, some of that is recruiting and some of it you just got to try and light a fire uh, under certain guys. Some get it, some don't. And, you know, but, uh, yeah, a lot of it, it's an innate quality. And we've got several of those guys, I think, on this roster. With the portal be becoming such a big thing in college sports, how much does NIL play into that? And how much does a group like 1890 here in Nebraska help you? Yeah, we're, we're, in, we're so fortunate, to, you know, what the Pede family has helped with, uh, with 1890, with Matt Davison and his, his uh, crew and, and what they're doing to help us uh, get our foot in, in the door with some really high-end uh, uh, transfers that go into the portal. And that's a big thing right now, Greg. You know, whether you like it or not, it's, it's part of uh, the landscape of college athletics right now. And you have to, you know, I know Coach Rule has talked a lot about this, uh, you know, with, with, with what they've done to build uh, the roster and have the success that they've had this offseason you know, bringing in some really, really high-level transfers and obviously young players, you know, with Rayola being the headliner with that. So, you know, it is an important part of what we do when you construct a roster because when you are bringing uh, kids in here for visits, that comes up. You know, these kids can have agents now and they can represent them and, and you have to, uh, you know, find a way to compete in that area. And we are very fortunate to have uh, 1890 behind us and, and, uh, and a lot of great support. Because I'm sure it's Probably one of the first questions you get asked by potential student athletes, and then what 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 can you do for us? Yeah, it's not one of the first questions. It's, it's, <laughs> it's the number. first question. Yeah. And, yeah, and and listen, there's rules in place, and you know you got to make sure you're following them, and you know we try to do the best 
<clears throat> you know, that we can in that area. And we're fortunate to have a staff here that really helps keep on top of all that. Very good. All right, uh, week off until you play Penn State. You touched briefly on the Nittany Lions. First year head coach, play a little bit different style. You mentioned that earlier. They'll they'll get after you. They'll press you. They'll show you some looks you maybe haven't seen all season. Yeah, they're twelfth in the country in turnovers forced. So wow. they, they do a great job of getting up. They run a lot of run and jump uh, traps. We can't run away from the ball. We have to run through passes. Uh, they're really good. They've got great activity uh, with their hands, and they got some high-level transfers. They got a couple North Carolina players. They got a player from Miami. Uh, he brought uh, uh, Mike brought a guy from um, VCU that's one of their better players in Ace Baldwin. Uh, Kanye Cleary is their leading scorer, who is a returner uh, from last year's team. But he did a really good job building that roster, especially coming in as a first-year guy. Yeah, because it, it, the coach who left and went to Notre Dame had done a nice job with that program, and we're kind of on the uprise. And you, you hate to see that, but he's. Flip that thing around. They do play a midweek game. Um, obviously, you'll probably be scouting that, right? You'll be probably checking that tape out. Yeah, they play. Uh, they play Michigan State on Wednesday at uh, uh, in Happy Valley. So that that's going to be one. Certainly, we'll see. Obviously, you know, I watched uh, two games today. I may watch another one tonight, and you know, certainly with the day off, I'll watch a couple more uh, tomorrow and just try to get a game plan together. The one thing about this, you know, now that you have a little bit of time, you know, when you only have a short amount of prep, you know, where you put the game plan in in a day or a day and a half. You really try to keep it concise. You know, here you just don't want to overwhelm them and yeah. throw so many things at them that they don't remember anything. So, uh, you know, they they run some pretty unique things, and they you know they slip out of screens uh, a lot, a lot of drags, double drags coming down in transition, and their play within the play in the half court is is pretty impressive with what they do, and they're shooting the ball very well right now. We did learn, coach, a couple weeks ago that the Big Ten is going to stay at 20 league games next year with the addition of those four West Coast schools. Can you now jump into putting together your non-conference schedule? Maybe you already had some of that done prior to that announcement two weeks ago. Yeah, yeah, we're we're always looking at that and trying to figure out, uh, you know, what the best schedule for us to uh, to be able to compete and have a chance to play in the postseason. And yeah, we're uh, we're in talks right now with several teams, uh, but I think that's the right thing to do with what they did with the 20 games. It gives you some flexibility with your non-conference schedule. And, uh, you know, when they said 22 or 24, I was getting real nervous. <laughs> I like to keep it at 20. Uh, you know, I probably would have been happier if they would have knocked that down to 18. 18. <laughs> what about the tournament? They're not going to take everybody. I mean, I almost kind of have to, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah I think so. It's, I, it, again, I think they, they hit it right on, right on the head. They, they did the right thing with what they did with the scheduling and also what they're doing with the postseason tournament. All right, we're, next segment we're going to hear from uh, Joe. Rink Mass, who had a terrific game, eight assists for Rink in the game the other day, and I think that's one of the things that impressed you when he became available and an option for you last spring was the ability for him to be a passer. That's pretty big for your offense. Yeah, really high IQ player. That that was one thing that was really important. And when you have a guy like that that can stretch the floor, and you've seen several games at K State, he had an unbelievable hit three of them in the first half, and then uh, hit six of them against Ohio State. Uh, you know, when you have that guy that can knock down shots and bring the big away from the basket, that certainly helps in the system that we play with the spread offense. And then his ability to pass. And this is our second year in a row now where our five man has led the team in assists. It was Derek a year ago, and uh, Rink is leading us this year. And even going back to the days at Iowa State, Royce White, uh, he led us in all five categories points, rebounds, assists, steals, blocks. He was phenomenal with his versatility. And then George Niang, uh, same thing, who's playing with the Cleveland Cavaliers, having a great year. Uh, right now, but when you have guys that can make a shot and make a play, uh, it's perfect for this system. He leads you in three of those, I think. Yeah, he does. Points, yep. assists, and I know he's been, like you said earlier, he's been a tone setter for you, a veteran guy, and kind of been through the wars, not in the Big Ten level, but he's been through enough college basketball season, he kind of knows how this thing goes. And a great leader, uh, you know, just a world-class kid, and everybody looks to him uh, for guidance. He does a great job. He's, you know, when we've been right in our huddles, he's been the guy that's really been vocal in there, Josiah. Uh, same, uh, CJ, you know, I've talked a lot about his progression and his leadership, but yeah, just really great to <clears throat> excuse me, have rank on this roster. Good. Well, enjoy the kind of down week, and I know you ought to ramp it back up by Saturday. Early start, too. You need people to be out. A little brunch at PBA at 11 o'clock. Yeah, it, I, I just love seeing this right now with the Haymarket, uh, you know, before games. Our game, you know, the, the game yesterday that was sold out, it's just it's been really fun to see. The weather's turning. Uh, it's a fun time right now. Our, our big thing right now, Greg, we got to keep our edge. You know, when you yeah. have an off week like this, you just can't exhale too deeply. We need to... Uh, get our bodies right and heal. 
Uh, but at the same time, you've got to keep the edge that we had on Saturday and uh, carry that over for these last six. All right, have a good week. Yeah, you too, thanks. Head Coach Fred Hoiberg. Contact 811 two days before you dig to protect your underground utilities and yourself. It's free, it's easy, and it's the law. When we come back, we'll hear from Rank Mast. Big game for him Saturday in the Huskers. 20-point win over the Wolverines. That's coming up next. It's time for some Nebraska farm facts. Want to know a fast way to rev up our Nebraska economy while helping the planet? It's right in your tank. When you fill up with clean soy-based biodiesel, you're increasing Nebraska biodiesel production while reducing greenhouse gases by up to 74%. So look for biodiesel where you fill up. It benefits our air, our economy, and our farmers. This message is brought to you by Nebraska Soybean Farmers, growing opportunity from the ground up. Noddle Companies is proud to support Husker Athletics. As a leader in commercial real estate, we create thriving communities. Discover what's new in the Builders District in North Downtown, Sunnyside Exarbon, and Row House Townhomes on Leavenworth. Noddle Companies is adding Omaha's first hybrid timber building to the skyline. Soon to follow is Builders Green Park, surrounded by mouth-watering food, exciting retail, and a hub of thriving businesses. Noddle Companies, building a better Nebraska. For more information, check us out on Facebook and Instagram. Go Huskers! That's the best way I could describe how it felt for me when I would walk out of either the casino or the Kino parlor is that you just felt that wave of heat, that wave of oppression kind of hit you, that wave of dread. Mike is a former problem gambler. Right away, you would always know that that drive home would be the worst moments of why. Why did I do this again? Why can't I stop this? Help for problem gambling is free for Nebraskans and their families at Life After Bet. Com. Central Valley Ag knows the importance of matching your mineral program to local grazing and feeding conditions. That's why CVA Power Minerals are carefully crafted to meet the unique needs of your herd. For a limited time, register for a discount on CVA Power Cow and Power Range Minerals and get a branded apparel item with a minimum ton purchase. Visit cvacoop.com to learn more. Our planet is hungry. Together, we feed it. Central Valley Ag, the official co-op of Husker Nation. Hit us up on the text line. Text 402-413-2400 with your Husker thoughts. Kidwell is celebrating 75 years of business, and they know how many network issues you and your team have to resolve. Let them help. Kidwell and Juniper leverage Mist AI to provide more visibility, flexibility, and scalability into your network to quickly get rid of those trouble tickets. Heighten the user experience and deliver reliable wireless access to customers and employees to simplify operations for network administrators. Kidwell, see beyond. Inspiring connectivity and communication since 1948. Start your next journey with Woodhouse. Our commitment extends beyond just selling cars. We offer an unparalleled car buying experience that allows you to shop and buy all online. Explore an array of new brands, makes, and models, as well as our large selection of pre-owned vehicles. And it's easy to get started today with our streamlined purchasing process online, granting you the freedom to secure your next vehicle anytime, anywhere. Discover a better way to buy with Woodhouse. A few drinks at home after work, a couple of hits at a party with some friends, over-the-counter drugs for a minor illness, a new daily prescription, and you're not quite sure how it makes you feel. It doesn't just matter how much of a substance you take. If it impairs you, driving becomes deceptively dangerous. Don't drive impaired. Paid for by the NDOT Highway Safety Office. Hey Huskers, it's a new day in Nebraska. Manzer Equipment, Mertz Farm Equipment, and West Point Implement of Columbus have teamed up as True Ag and Turf. Coach Rule is bringing innovation and high performance standards to Husker football, and True Ag is doing the same to your farm with game changing Fent equipment. As Big Red establishes power on the field, True Ag and Turf does the same in the field by welcoming Fent to Nebraska. It's time for another round of Nebraska Farm Facts. If there's one thing Nebraska's known for, it's our beef. And Nebraska soybeans feed a lot of them, and even more pigs and chickens. Farmers and ranchers raise livestock and poultry to provide nutritious, affordable protein for all ages to help build muscle and maintain energy for a healthy lifestyle. Keep that in mind as you prepare all that tasty meat on your tailgate grill. 
This message is brought to you by Nebraska Soybean Farmers, growing opportunity from the ground up. Kidwell is celebrating 75 years of business, and they know how many network issues you and your team have to resolve. Let them help. Kidwell and Juniper leverage Mist AI to provide more visibility, flexibility, and scalability into your network to quickly get rid of those trouble tickets. Heighten the user experience and deliver reliable wireless access to customers and employees to simplify operations for network administrators. Kidwell, see beyond. Inspiring connectivity and communication since 1948. Folks, you can win a 2024 Porsche Macon from Porsche of Omaha this season. Some Husker fans are going to get a chance to win that Porsche if they make a full court putt at halftime of one of the men's basketball games. For information and the official rules, go to huskers.com slash putt. Welcome back. It's our men's basketball show for the week. The head coach Fred Hoiberg was with us earlier after the Huskers 20-point win Saturday over the Michigan Wolverines. Jessica caught up with Rink Mast. All right, well, how good was that getting back in the wind column here at home again today? Uh, that was necessary. We lost two in a row, so, I mean, you can't lose three in a row, and especially not at home. Uh, so, yeah, happy that we took care of business today. What kind of confidence do you guys have playing at home? I mean, how much does this provide you guys just some, maybe some extra oomph when you take the court here inside PBA? I mean, at this point, it's like we know when we're at home, it's, it's going to be good. We're, we're going to be fine. Uh, sometimes that mentality, like you don't, you shouldn't take it too lightly, but we know at, at home we play better. Um, on the road is a little bit of a, there's a mental wall or something, I don't know. Uh, we're working through it, um, but at, 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 least, at least we've taken care of home and uh, we still got three road games uh, to go. So um, keep taking care of home and then let's get one on the road. Josiah Alec, how big was he to start this game here tonight? Oh, he was, he was huge. Uh, well, we always talk about, like, in the beginning, we want to start fast and set the tone, especially physically, uh, on the glass and um, in uh, loose balls and 50-50 balls. And that's exactly what he did. He started on the glass, got a couple offensive rebounds, and really set the tone, like, physically-wise for us. Like, hey, we, we can rebound against these guys, and we, we're be bigger, stronger than these guys. Like, let's, let's go after it. So, no, he was, he was enormous. Uh, Coach Hoiberg always emphasizes the, the turnovers and the rebounding, and you guys are pretty good in both of those statistics. How, how big of an emphasis was that for today, especially the turnovers? You guys had only one at half. Yeah, turnovers was good. Uh, they did miss a lot of shots, which they got back. Um, they shot some air balls that fell right into their lap. Uh, I think they had like 18 offensive boards or something. That's still too many. So I, we, we did take care of the turnovers, but I think we, think we still had to have a long way with the rebounds. So we'll keep working on that. We got to... A bit of a week off, so get some rest and fix some things up, especially the rebounding is going to be a big one. Um, yeah, but overall, just good that we took care of business today. You guys always do a good job of sharing the basketball, but it seemed like tonight just that extra pass, that was really fun to watch. How much do you guys feel that, like when people are clicking like you were in the first half, to, to keep sharing the basketball and get the open look? Uh, I think we got a team with guys that want to share the ball, and if somebody got a hot hand, then we feed it. Or if we are just finding open guys very easily, we, we know that we can keep doing that. It, it's so amazing to play on a team with guys that all want to give each other the ball and want to set each other up for, for success and good shots and open shots. So, yeah, especially that first half, it was a lot of fun. The, the ball was just going around. I remember one pass where I caught it off like a like a short roll, and I was going. I could have gone up for the for the basket, but I saw I saw Juwan cutting, so I just dumped it off to him, and he got a dunk. Like that's that's such fun plays, and the crowd reacted like crazy. So that's that's the fun ones. You guys are playing some pretty basketball. What do you like more, making a big shot or a big big pass? Uh, I honestly I like passing better, <laughs> especially that second half. I. Obviously, kind of look at the at the stats. I think I had like seven or eight assists at some point, so I was like, all right, let's let's get that double digit. So I, I I had a couple where I thought I got my teammates pretty good shots, but they then they missed them, so didn't get it. But uh, just like sharing the ball and I, Bryce had one where he almost uh, dunked it on one of their guys. Like if you if you can set your teammates up for those type of plays, that's just awesome. You know, we, we talk a lot about the offense, but it seemed like you guys really locked in defensively, especially in that first half, too. How important was that? How big is that to set you guys up for what you do offensively? Um, I think at this point we know our offense is going to be there. 
Um, really, the defense is what's, what's going to win us games. Like today, uh, first 15 minutes of the first half, defense was good. Last five minutes was not great. Um, but yeah, if, if we show up and we defend, we're going to be in every game. If the defense is not there, we're going to have a tough time. But if the defense is there, then we can beat anybody. What does that, when Casey's hitting shots like he does, what does that do for your, you guys as an entire team? It just gives us some calmness. Like, okay, he's, he's on fire. Like, we, we can kind of feed him and play off him because he's, he's got such gravity. Like, defenders want to stay on, like, right next to him. And if I set a screen for him, my guy is going to try and make sure he doesn't catch it. Like, he, if he's on, he just opens up so much for the rest of the team. By week now, how needed is it for this team right now to kind of have a week to take care of the things you need to take care of? Uh, we have a lot of small, like this type of time of season, there's a lot of small pains going around. I know a couple of the guys definitely have been in the training room a whole lot trying to take care of their bodies. I know for myself, I definitely need a couple of days of rest. So this is uh, very necessary. We'll take a couple of days of rest, make sure that the bodies feel a little better, uh, get rid of some of the, the smaller pains. And then uh, get after it again because we got, I mean, we got to keep defending home court. Can't drop a single one. Absolutely. And, and you've played a lot of basketball, been a lot of part of a lot of teams. How much do you feel like this team is on the right track at this point where you guys are headed into this bye week and coming off of it? Do you feel like you guys are on the right track? Uh, overall, yes. Uh, I still see some, some room for improvement. I would have liked to either win the Illinois or the Northwestern one, but those are gone now, so we can't change that anymore. Um, no, I like where we're at overall. Uh, we got to take care of home and uh, see if we can steal one or two on the road. But overall, I think we're trending in the right direction. You want to play your best basketball in, in February and in March. And definitely the, the first 15 minutes of the game today, we showed we, when we play at our best, we're, we're very hard to stop. Appreciate your time, Rink. Thank you. Husker big man Rink Mass played the most minutes Saturday of any Husker, a little over 34 minutes. At 11 points, six rebounds, eight assists. And as we talked with Coach Hoiberg earlier in the hour, he leads this team in assists. And that's back to back years with a big guy. Last year, Derek Walker, this year, Rick Mast have led the Cornhuskers in assists. And again, that victory over Michigan, Nebraska's 17th win of the year. They are now 17 and 8 and 7 and 7 in league play. We're back to wrap up our men's basketball show. We'll do that coming up next. Pizza's here. Oh, great. I'd love some, but I'm worried about my stomach issues. If you're worried about having diarrhea, gas, bloating, stomach pain, or loose oily stools, it may not just be stomach issues. It could be a condition called exocrine pancreatic insufficiency, or EPI. With EPI, the pancreas doesn't release enough enzymes to break down food, but EPI is manageable. Use the symptom checker on identifyepi.com and talk to your doctor. That's identifyepi.com. Sponsored by AbbVie. Blue Cross and Blue Shield of Nebraska exists to be there with you. From the first bell to final exams, they are rooting for the schools and teachers who make our communities great. Throughout the year, Blue Cross and Blue Shield of Nebraska and Nebraska Athletics will be honoring outstanding educators who help Nebraska's students reach their potential. If there's a teacher you want to recognize for the impact they've made in your community, find a nomination form at huskers.com slash teachers. A few drinks at home after work, a couple of hits at a party with some friends, over-the-counter drugs for a minor illness, a new daily prescription and you're not quite sure how it makes you feel. It doesn't just matter how much of a substance you take. If it impairs you, driving becomes deceptively dangerous. Don't drive impaired. Paid for by the NDOT Highway Safety Office. Hit us up on the text line. Text 402-413-2400 with your Husker thoughts. Get ready to rule the field and revolutionize your farming game with Valley, the game changer in irrigation and ag tech solutions. With time and labor saving measures, ground truthing results, and effective input reduction, Valley provides the perfect game plan so you stay ahead of what's in the field. From the best in irrigation and cutting edge ag tech solutions to personalized support, Valley is your winning team. Visit your local Valley dealer or valleyirrigation.com today. 
For generations, hardworking people have relied on Ford F-Series trucks to help grow businesses, communities, families, a legacy of capability and technology that's made Ford F-Series America's best-selling trucks 47 years straight. This is the next generation of Built for Tough. Now, get 1.9% financing for 72 months on a new 2023 Ford F-150 only at your Midwest Ford dealers. Woodhouse Auto Family is your trusted auto partner. 20 brands, 20 convenient sales and service locations. We're making car buying on your terms. Visit us online at woodhouse.com. Look at the Big Ten standings after the weekend. Purdue is now has a two-game lead over Illinois. Boilermakers 11-2 and two in the conference. The Illini 8-4. and four. Northwestern and Wisconsin now tied for third. 8-5. and five. The Badgers have dropped, as we mentioned with Coach earlier in the hour. They've dropped their last four games including the last two to Rutgers and Michigan on the road. They do play Ohio State tomorrow night in Madison. Then Michigan State is 7-6. and six. Right now the Huskers would be in sixth place in the conference at 7-7. Seven and seven. Minnesota is 6-6, six and six, so they played two fewer games than the Cornhuskers. They'll pick one of those up this week when Nebraska have in the midweek bye. And then you've got a batch of teams at 6-7, and seven. Indiana, Iowa and Penn State, who will be here Saturday, all six and seven, and then Rutgers has moved their way up to five and seven with some better basketball here of late. Huskers again will host the Nittany Lions Saturday at 11 o'clock at PBA. That game is a sellout, so they've sold out both Michigan and Penn State. There are still a few tickets left for the Minnesota game on the 25th and then the senior night game on March the 3rd with Rutgers. Not a lot, but still some tickets left for those two if you want to try to get out and see the Oscars. So Saturday, 11 a.m. against Penn State at PBA. Then they go to Bloomington to take on Indiana next Wednesday night. That'll be a 7.30 tip. Then back home for another weekend night game, Sunday night at the 25th at 5.30 as the Gophers will be at PBA. So that's the upcoming schedule for the Cornhuskers moving forward. Now you get two bye weeks during the season where you don't play from weekend to weekend. or in one. And doggone it, the last one comes the last week. You really don't want it there, but you get it. That's so the Oscars will have a week off between the Rutgers game and when they finish the regular season in Ann Arbor against Michigan on the 10th of March. And that's actually not a bad way because then you're going to be launching into the league tournament in Minneapolis just a couple of days after that. But you'd like, to, would have loved to have had one of these bye weeks in January, but it is what it is. The league gives you the uh, schedule uh, for what that is. So no basketball for the Huskers until Wednesday. The women do play on Wednesday night. They're traveling to a nationally ranked Ohio State to take on the Buckeyes on Wednesday night. Who, boy, the Buckeyes had to be cheering on the Huskers yesterday because that was a loss to um, Iowa, who Ohio State's battling to win the league race on the women's side. So the men off till Saturday. The women will play again on Wednesday on the road at Ohio State. In fact, the women are on the road for both games this week at Ohio State and at Purdue. We'll have our Amy Williams show coming your way on Thursday night. That'll put a wrap on our number one. Thanks to the coach for being in here for an hour. Great to talk to him. Pretty good mood. I think he got a little sleep over the weekend after the victory over Michigan on Saturday. Coming up next hour, we'll recap that fabulous women's victory over the Iowa Hawkeyes yesterday. Hear from some of those Husker players as uh, they celebrated with a court storm of their own after beating number two, Iowa, at PBA yesterday afternoon. Hour one in the books, hour two coming up on the other side. Come on back. Hit us up on the text line. Text 402-413-2400 with your Husker thoughts. There's no community like a Cenex community. And that's why every Cenex store is so proud to serve theirs by supporting local athletic teams, promoting the arts, and making sure each store is a place its neighbors can find what they need, catch up with their friends, and stay connected. It's also why we give back, helping to make the wonderful places we call home the best they can be. Your local Cenex doesn't just work in your town, it lives there. The store next door, powered locally at Cenex. 
Nautil Companies is proud to support Husker Athletics. As a leader in commercial real estate, we create thriving communities. Discover what's new in the Builders District in North Downtown, Sunnyside Exarbon, and Row House Townhomes on Leavenworth. Nautil Companies is adding Omaha's first hybrid timber building to the skyline. Soon to follow is Builders Green Park, surrounded by mouth-watering food, exciting retail, and a hub of thriving businesses. Nautil Companies, building a better Nebraska. For more information, check us out on Facebook and Instagram. Go Huskers! Farming today is a combination of hard work, innovation, and partnerships to help keep us moving forward. Sap Brothers Petroleum has provided us with fuel, propane, and lubricants on the farm for many years. For over 52 years, Sap Brothers has been a reliable partner to thousands of farmers across our great state. We work hard to make sure our customers have the most reliable supply, provided in the safest manner and at the most competitive price. Trust Sap Brothers Petroleum to protect your equipment and keep your farm fueled. Sap Brothers is proud to be an official partner of Huskers Athletics and to serve Nebraska farmers and Husker fans across America's heartland. Hi, this is Husker National Champion and Super Bowl champ Tony Veland. Throughout my football career, chiropractic care helped my athletic performance on the field and kept me in the game. Today, regular chiropractic care keeps me healthy and active to do the things I love. Chiropractic is safe and effective for all ages. Make chiropractic your first choice to reduce pain, improve your mobility, and feel better naturally. It works for me, and it can work for you too. Learn more at NebraskaChiropractic.org. Stay active with chiropractic.
Good evening. I'm David Swotek, and our sports ticker is brought to you by the 1890 Initiative. Starting off, we have not one, not two, but three Huskers with weekly awards. First, Nebraska's Chase Mondi earned the Big Ten Freshman of the Week. Mondi was awarded for his performance in the gymnastics meet against Michigan on Saturday. He competed in two events, getting second overall in the floor event and sixth on the vault. With this performance, he helped the Huskers match their team record in the vault at 73.2 points, made back in 2018. The other awards of the week go to Jazz Shelley and Natalie Potts for some Big Ten honors. Shelley earned the Big Ten Player of the Week for her performance against the Iowa Hawkeyes yesterday, and Potts earned her sixth Big Ten Freshman of the Week. Potts leads the Big Ten Freshman in scoring, rebounding, and field goal percentage. Finally, the Huskers women's basketball team took down the then number two Iowa Hawkeyes, 82 to 79 yesterday. The now number four Hawkeyes star player Caitlin Clark dropped 31 points last night, but was not quite enough. Nebraska outscored Iowa in the fourth quarter, 27 to 10, with Jazz Shelley scoring 10 of her season high 23 points in the final five minutes of the game. The Huskers broke the Hawkeyes' four-game winning streak and looks forward to Wednesday night for their matchup against the new number two team, Ohio State. Our sports ticker is, brought, is sponsored by the 1890 Initiative. Do you want to support Husker student-athletes through name, image, and likeness? If so, visit 1890nebraska.com. Coming up next is Hour 2 of Sports Nightly, right here on the Huskers Radio Network. Coming to you live from Memorial Stadium, it's Sports Nightly. All the Huskers, all the time. Sports Nightly is presented to you by the NDOT Highway Safety Office, who remind you to buckle up and put the phone down. Goes off the bounce, goes behind your back, works foul line, pots for three, top of the key, you betcha! Natalie Potts, the Big Ten Freshman of the Week with a triple. Getting a hand on it with Joan Gary. Wilcher scoops it up now to Williams across the timeline. Williams to the trailing Wilcher. Fumbled it, got it back. Drives to the baseline, 15-footer up. Got it, got it, got it, got it! We got a tie ball game! Eight on the shot clock, Gary and White. Right wing, needs help. High lob underneath, Markowski. Gets a double team. Kicks to the deep left corner. Moriarty with two. With one. Her three-pointer. It's back rim. It goes in. You betcha. Kendall Moriarty with a triple. Huge shot. The pump fake by Mass. Step back three on the way. Got it. Got it. Got it. Got it. Holy smokes. Holy cow. The Flying Dutchman with a big three to tie it at 65. Here are your hosts, Greg Sharp and Jessica Cooty on the Huskers Radio Network. We're heading towards uh, 12.07 p.m. Central tip time here between Nebraska and second-ranked Iowa. Shelly ahead. Nisley, head of the key. Potts, two-hand pass, left side, quarter court. Shelly, high lob down low. Markowski double Great team. pass. Back cut, Moriarty driving layup. Off the assist from Markowski. It's a six-point game. 465 Iowa, 4.55 to go. Here's Nisley on the left wing. It's Kendall Moriarty, triple threat position. Kendall's played great today with seven points. Here's Markowski, right side of the key. Chaz Shelley comes off the screen. Screen and roll caught by Markowski. Double team at the Shelley. Top of the key three. Shelley, you betcha. Shelley's got 16 as she knocks down a triple. Two minutes, eight seconds to go. Fourth quarter, 77 to 70, Iowa. Logan Nisley on the right side of the key. Steps back. A couple of ball fakes. Now she'll take a three. You betcha. Nisley's got 13. They came here to see if Caitlin Clark could set the record. But right now, everybody is trying to see if Nebraska can pull the major upset on national TV here today. Nisley out top with 15 to shoot. Dribbles against Clark. The right elbow. Shelly throws down low. Markowski kicks it out to Jazz. Knocked away by Marshall. Seven to shoot. Six to shoot. Shelly for three. You betcha! Huskers take their first lead of the game with 30 seconds left. You betcha! Huskers take the lead over second-ranked Iowa. 82-79, Nebraska leads second-ranked Iowa in front of a sellout crowd. A falter bounces it in. Out top, Caitlin Clark, way away from the basket. Shelly on her. She no steps way. back, misses that three. A falter, the rebound. Gets it out to Kate Martin at the buzzer to tie it. Huskers win! You betcha! Go crazy, folks! Huskers have done it! They're storming the court! Storm that puppy! Huskers defeat Iowa, 82-79! to What an amazing fourth quarter comeback by the Huskers as they pull it off yesterday, beating 
Second ranked Iowa at PBA. Giant win for the Big Red. That was fun to listen back to uh, those classic calls from Matt Cody and Jeff Grease. What a way to launch hour number two of Sports Island. You were in the building. It was special, wasn't it? It really was. Yeah, I got to take my parents. They went to both the games this weekend. Um, Michigan, the men's game, and then yesterday, my mom, of course, she was uh, had to go down on the court and be a sure. part of the court storm. How, how, how often can you say you're a part of that? But, <laughs> yeah, it really was. And, you know, you can point to so many different things that, that the Oscars did, but it was a total team effort, and it was going to take that to be able to pull off that kind of win. And, you know, the way that they locked in, they were down, could have – when you're when you're down 14 against a team like Iowa, that's a pretty hard to pretty turn big around. mountain to climb. And you know, the, but the way that they still locked in, changed up some defenses, and even Caitlin Clark said, "Hey, that that gave us all kinds of fits in the fourth quarter." But they kept fighting back, and Jazz Shelley just ice in her veins, took that shot with so much confidence. It was good to see because there's been some stretches here where where Jazz hasn't been typical Jazz. I think she's been a, a little bit hurt. Um, maybe nursing an ankle a little bit, but, you know, to see her come back and, and to play that way and, man, just a huge win, huge win for this program. Can't say enough. Kudos and congratulations. And, and that coaching staff deserves that, and that team deserves that. This fan base de deserves that. And those Iowa fans that showed up, they were pretty loud there at the beginning of the, of the game, but by the end, it was definitely Husker Nation that was rocking that place. Yeah, you could hear a lot of uh, go, go Hawks. Let's go Hawks. Let's go Hawks That's chance what they said, yeah. during the, the game. You know, I thought Kendall Moriarty would, did a nice job defensively, that boxing one that Amy went to, and I kept kind of waiting for a, a triangle and two or boxing one, just something to give Iowa a different look. I think they pulled it out at the right time. They pulled it out in the fourth quarter, and it did. It confused the Hawkeyes, and I think it got Caitlin out of her rhythm. And then when she did take shots, she wasn't kind of locked in like she was early in the game. Well, that was a great strategy move by Coach Williams. It really was. And, and yeah, huge shout-out. Again, another player. You could literally go down the line of everybody that played on the court that they made some sort of impact to help this team pull that out. But Kendall Moriarty was the one that, that got that task. But I thought Jazz Shelley did a good job on – on um, Caitlin Clark for a lot of the, the stretches. And yes, she still had 31, but it seemed like it was pretty labor laborious for her to get that 31 up until that point. And then, you know, the other players did a pretty good job of shutting everybody else down. Kate Martin got going once they did go to that box and one. She was the one that maybe had some more of the open looks with the emphasis on trying to shut down Caitlin Clark. But, you know, I, I, I thought overall, you know, especially there towards the, the end of when they start going on that run, I thought the defense really stepped up big. And, you know, it takes everybody to, to try to stop Caitlin Clark and that stretch they did that. Uh, I mean, it, they, they really did. They locked in defensively, which is in turn allowed them to get some stops and get back into that thing. And um, they took advantage on the other end. Jazz was 23, and you heard David saying the ticker. She was named the conference player of the week today. Well-deserved. And... and you know, the stats is what a lot of the voters work on. If anybody was a true basketball fan, they would have watched her defense. She does a nice job defensively for this team. And that's a good win because I think Nebraska was starting to trend toward the bubble a little bit. Well, that's a huge win for the resume. That gets them completely off the bubble. Now you can start trying to climb some seating lines going through the, the rest of the schedule here. But that was just a giant win. Big crowd, sellout crowd. What a day at PBA. And like you said, third corn court storming of the year. We've been kind of spoiled around here the last month. It's amazing. And, and you, you hear each week, you sit here and you talk to these coaches, the assistant coaches for both programs. And it is amazing how supportive they are of one another. But it's also pretty evident how proud they are of the reputation that Pinnacle Bank Arena has gotten for a basketball arena for both men's and women's basketball. Yeah. It's not just about one program. It's not just about, you know, what the men are doing and what the women have. To, it's, it is become the the reputation is there now that this is a hard place a very hard place for any basketball team whatever it might be to come in and, and try to get a win both teams have done a very good job of protecting the home court and it's it's special when you can come in and they have that kind of confidence because they've performed so well at home and they 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 believe that they can beat anybody on that court that's the difference and that's what i asked rink about earlier is What's the difference in the confidence in this building than it is on the road? And, and how can you maybe tap into that? But there is no doubt when you watch these two teams play, there's a different kind of belief and confidence when they play at Pinnacle Bank Arena. 
And, you know, a lot of that is because of the atmosphere that's been been created there by by the fans. And I think both certainly both fan bases are proud of it. I thought it was just so neat to see, um, you know, down there on the front row, right behind the 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 court or the the goal. The entire men's team was there pretty really? much, and they were they were getting in on the chance. They were up there trying to get the crowd loud. I mean, they were so into it, and it was it was just so cool. And then, yeah, you know, a couple of them were first ones to rush the court, and the, that kind of support. And I know the women feel the same way, but it it just was really neat to see they were they were as invested in uh, the Huskers knocking down the Hawkeyes as as anybody there. It was really cool to see that kind of support there too. Brad on our text line said, "What an awesome game, awesome crowd, full team effort. I really appreciate the emotion show. Definitely a family culture." And the Nebraska way. Yeah, I don't know, other than the, the Iowa fans, any Husker fan walked out of there with a big smile on their face yesterday to turn back that crowd and, and to keep Caitlin from getting the record. She'll probably get it in their next game. But now 16 and 8, 8 and 5 in the league. And this will be a tough week, both on the road. They go to Ohio State and Purdue. These will be both tough games for this team. But boy, just putting that in the win column, huge resume builder. Just, we may look back in a month and go, that, that was the game that really turned the season for him. Well, and I love what Amy Williams said about when she was asked about how much did you talk about the record? We didn't because what we cared about was getting the win. Yeah. I don't think they would have cared if Caitlin Clark would have scored 39 or 40 if they would have gotten the win because they would have done enough things, other things, right, to be able to, that, that's the most important thing. Who cares if they stop Caitlin Clark from getting the record, but Iowa left with the win. You know, I don't, I don't think that was at all a part of what this team discussed or what was important. Hey, let's, no, let's, let's do what we have to do to get the win. If that means shutting everybody else down and Caitlin Clark gets 45 or 50, that's what we'll do. I think they were willing to do whatever it takes. And I, I you know, hey, just cherry on top that you prevented her from getting the record and you got the win. But I think most importantly for this team was, was getting the win. But I love what both, the, both players told me after the game, you know, when you go back to what the men did in the first half against Michigan, that shows us how good we could be because that was arguably their best stretch of basketball. Mm -hmm. And the same thing with the, what the women said. This, is, this shows us what we can do when we, when we put it all together. And so I, I think hopefully both these teams will build off of what they did this weekend because there was some really good basketball played both days over a stretch of 48 hours inside Pinnacle Bank Arena that should propel, should hopefully, you would, you would hope, would pr continue to propel both these teams forward. All right. Um, I, I do want to talk about what happened afterwards because that's really been a big story today. Uh, Iowa had a lot of bitterness. They uh, felt like the, 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 the protocol in the Big Ten is, is the visiting team gets to visit the media room first, do the interviews, and get out of there, get to their airport, and fly home. Uh, yesterday, apparently Nebraska, who spent a bunch of time on the court after the game, I think it was 18, 19 minutes before they got back to their locker room, then they went to the media room thinking Iowa had probably already gone first. They get there. Jeff Grish, who we hear on our broadcast, is the women's sports information director. When he heard, oh, Iowa hasn't even been here yet, he goes, okay, well, my student athletes are standing here. I'm going to put them up there. If Iowa shows up, I'll take our kids off the podium and put them up and go. Well, sure, as you, as you would guess, a couple minutes into Nebraska's media session, here came the Iowa coach and players. Uh, Lisa Blitter was uh, very upset, the Iowa head coach, screaming, this is, not, this is against Big Ten protocol. Uh, Jeff Grish's plan was to take the Nebraska players off the stage, but she spun and tore and went on back to the locker room. She never addressed the media after the game. The Iowa players did get up on the stage and talk. Pretty messy situation. I don't think there's anything Nebraska did wrong. I think they assumed, give them 20 minutes, they probably have already come and gone because the rule book, the protocol says you get a 10-minute cooling off period, then you need to go talk to the media. Well, again, it was 18, 19 minutes after the game. They still were... I guess, hanging out. I don't know what they were doing in their locker room. but So Lisa Bluter was not happy about that, and she was not happy. She said Nebraska was playing music during free throw shooting. That, that's false. There was no music. It was the womp, womp, you know, After when they miss missed it. Though. But um, I don't know if there's a rule against that. I don't. Caitlin Clark got, was asked about it and said that she didn't hear it. And so, look, either way, you've got to be able to lock in. That You can't use that as an excuse. They had plenty of other opportunities. Um, but the, the whole thing with the, the fiasco and the press conference, yeah, I mean, I, I was there. I was kind of taking it all in. And unlike, you know, the, the core storming with the men, they kind of got them 
pretty off quickly quick. off the court. But the women kind of hung out, took some photos, hung out with some family, were signing autographs, taking pictures. Because I think for, for Coach Williams and that staff, they realized how special the day was, the, the sellout, um, the, the largest crowd to ever watch a women's basketball game. The you know how big that win was just again I think allowing them to take in that moment and a court storm for a women's basketball game so it took them a lot longer to clear the court the Nebraska women's team than it did with the men when it happened with the men so you know they're they're trying to you know get get people in and then then they go into the locker room have their celebration their post game speech with Coach Williams and so I mean it is 25 minutes yeah. probably yeah. after the game. I don't know what was taking so long, why it took them so long, but at that point, the, your media, the media is in there waiting to get some press conferences. They've been sitting in there because they, a lot of them, I think, go pretty, pretty quickly to, to, you know, get ready because most of the time they take the losing teams pretty quickly because they do have flights to catch. Yeah. They do have flights to catch, so they do usually move pretty quickly. And apparently, um, I don't know what happened, but they didn't come. And, yeah, I think it's probably just, hey, let's get somebody in there yeah. and move them. But just a very unprofessional reaction. And I get being frustrated, but, you know, you, I don't know why you took so long to get to the press conference. And what's the, how long do you have to wait? I mean, if you're, if you're the home team and you're going, we've been sitting here waiting, and Nebraska wasn't because they were out of the court, but if, if you're sitting there waiting 10, 15 minutes, you're going, all right, they're not going to come. We're going to go get ours done. I mean, we gave you guys ample time to come through and do that. And the doors typically stay open, and I, I don't know. I, I don't go to the media room, but I'm sure someone could confirm or deny this, but I'm pretty sure that those doors stay open. So she was probably pretty aware that whatever bit she was going to throw was going to be. So I thought it was very, um, she knew not it was very recorded. classy yeah. that it, it disrupted from the Nebraska women that were on the podium right there. It took away from their moment. You know, it was a pretty cool response that Alexis was talking about her dad, Andy, and getting to share that moment with him. And it was interrupted by the fit being thrown out in the hallway that very well, she probably very clearly could have seen that the door was open. And, you know, I just did just, I get being frustrated, but that is something that that's, that's kind of on you for not getting there sooner. And it's on you for, in your SID for not moving things quicker. If you got a flight to catch, why are you, why are you dragging your feet getting to the press conference when that's protocol for you to go to the press conference? Right. They, they, and it's a charter flight. That flight's going to wait for them five or ten minutes afterwards. So just an interesting look. Nebraska, I don't know why I was hoping for an apology. They're not getting one for Nebraska. Nebraska really didn't do anything wrong in this whole thing. And you're right. It was, it was during Caitlin Clark's, the, te the technical that Amy got, Caitlin went to the line to shoot. And she doesn't dribble when she gets ready to shoot a free throw. She just gets the ball from the official and shoots. Well, she was going very quick, so the womp, womp, womp was still playing while she shot, like, the second one. So what? Slow your tempo down a little bit. I mean, it wasn't music. It was the sound effect. I mean, they do that in NBA games all the time. Yeah. It's just... for And she even said it. Kudos. you got to give... I know people are not fans of her, but... And I, it's even more infuriating in person to watch how she cries to the for every single call. But still, she sits up there. She ants, She asks... She answers the questions that she's asked, and she said she did not hear the music. Yeah. So you, your star player is sitting there saying, I didn't hear it. Because you do. Like, how is the want want different than people sitting up there in the background waving their arms, you know, <laughs> right? like exactly. screaming and yelling? I watched some, some um, young kids at the men's game that were sitting um, courtside, which uh, awesome to them. They were getting up and jumping and, and swinging, swinging some things. Like, how, how does that... If you, you've got to lock in for what you're seeing in your peripheral visions, all of it, you have to lock all of it out. When you're going on the road and you're, a lot of times you're going facing the, uh, the team's student section or whatever it might be, think about um, volleyball serving. It's, it's, it's in sports. You, you hear that. You've yeah. got to be able to lock in. That's not an excuse. It's, you know, it's, it's ridiculous to me that that's even being brought up because how many distractions are trying to be thrown at you while you're shooting free throws when you're on the road? That's not going to make or break whether you make free throws or not. I'm totally, sorry, it's not. Totally agree. We're going to hear from Logan Nisley and also Maddie Crow coming up here in a little bit. Jess got a chance to catch up with them after the game. And we want to hear from you. Our text line's wide open, 402-413-2400. It's our Woodhouse Auto Family text line. They are your trusted partner. 20 brands, 20 convenient sales and service locations. We're making car buying and your terms. Visit us online at woodhouse.com. Back with more of the show coming up.
Hi, this is Husker National Champion and Super Bowl champ Tony Veland. Throughout my football career, chiropractic care helped my athletic performance on the field and kept me in the game. Today, regular chiropractic care keeps me healthy and active to do the things I love. Chiropractic is safe and effective for all ages. Make chiropractic your first choice to reduce pain, improve your mobility, and feel better naturally. It works for me, and it can work for you too. Learn more at nebraskachiropractic.org. Stay active with chiropractic. For farmers, productivity isn't an option. It's everything. And at Valley, we feel the same. Delivering game-changing technology and irrigation solutions that advance agricultural productivity with the results to prove it. From our leading irrigation technology to expert advice, you can always rely on Valley to bring out the best in your farm. At Valley, productivity isn't an option. It's everything. Visit your local Valley dealer or valleyirrigation.com today. At Groundworks, we take great pride in helping our Nebraska neighbors keep their homes healthy. From repairing foundations to waterproofing basements to fixing crawl spaces or lifting concrete driveways. We'd like to think our customers choose us because of our attention to detail or the fact that we're the nation's leading foundation solutions provider. What gives our customers the most comfort is we're right here in Nebraska. Visit Groundworks.com for a free estimate. Groundworks. Foundation Solutions, crafted with pride. The official foundation company of the Huskers. Hit us up on the text line. Text 402-413-2400 with your Husker thoughts. For generations, hardworking people have relied on Ford F-Series trucks to help grow businesses, communities, families, a legacy of capability and technology that's made Ford F-Series America's best-selling trucks 47 years straight. This is the next generation of built Ford Tough. Now, get 1.9% financing for 72 months on a new 2023 Ford F-150 only at your Midwest Ford dealers. Maybe your hometown celebrates long-standing Swiss traditions, cow chip throwing, or even classic car muscle. Everyone has a hometown, and every hometown has a festival. Senex wants to hear about yours. That's why we're launching the Hometown Throwdown. Tell us about your fest, and it could win $100,000. Learn more at SenexHometownThrowdown.com. Senex, powered locally. Noddle Companies is proud to support Husker Athletics. As a leader in commercial real estate, we create thriving communities. Discover what's new in the Builders District in North Downtown, Sunnyset Exarbon, and Row House Townhomes on Leavenworth. Noddle Companies is adding Omaha's first hybrid timber building to the skyline. Soon to follow is Builders Green Park, surrounded by mouth-watering food, exciting retail, and a hub of thriving businesses. Noddle Companies, building a better Nebraska. For more information, check us out on Facebook and Instagram. Go Huskers! Farming today is a combination of hard work, innovation, and partnerships to help keep us moving forward. Sap Brothers Petroleum has provided us with fuel, propane, and lubricants on the farm for many years. For over 52 years, Sap Brothers has been a reliable partner to thousands of farmers across our great state. We work hard to make sure our customers have the most reliable supply, provided in the safest manner and at the most competitive price. Trust Sap Brothers Petroleum to protect your equipment and keep your farm fueled. Sap Brothers is proud to be an official partner of Huskers Athletics and to serve Nebraska farmers and Husker fans across America's heartland. Land. Hi, this is Husker National Champion and Super Bowl champ Tony Veland. Throughout my football career, chiropractic care helped my athletic performance on the field and kept me in the game. Today, regular chiropractic care keeps me healthy and active to do the things I love. Chiropractic is safe and effective for all ages. Make chiropractic your first choice to reduce pain, improve your mobility, and feel better naturally. It works for me, and it can work for you too. Learn more at nebraskachiropractic.org. Stay active with chiropractic. At Groundworks, we take great pride in helping our Nebraska neighbors keep their homes healthy. From repairing foundations to waterproofing basements to fixing crawl spaces or lifting concrete driveways. We'd like to think our customers choose us because of our attention to detail or the fact that we're the nation's leading foundation solutions provider. What gives our customers the most comfort is we're right here in Nebraska. Visit Groundworks.com for a free estimate. Groundworks, foundation solutions crafted with pride the official foundation company of the Huskers. Back inside our Huskers Radio Network Broadcast Center, sponsored by Acres. They are the Midwest's premier John Deere dealer, supplying the equipment and service to advance agriculture and much more Acres solutions for every field. Greg Sharp, Jessica Cootie with you here on a Monday night. 
basking in the glow of the Huskers 82-79 win over Iowa yesterday afternoon. Afterwards, Jessica caught up with Husker guard Maddie Kroll. All right, first of all, how did it feel you got the crowd storming the court? How was it to be a part of that? Oh, my gosh, it's incredible. I, I don't know for sure. I haven't looked it up, but I don't know that that's ever happened here at PBA. But obviously kind of my journey here back as a Husker and then having a court storm, you know, beating number two Iowa, it's just all really surreal. And I'm just so proud to be a part of this team and this program. You guys get down to a team like Iowa. Sometimes it's hard to get back up. But what went into the fight back to be able to come back and take the lead there late? I think we just had really big plays from a lot of different kids. I think, um, you know, Kendall Moriarty, she just did absolutely phenomenal job of getting to the rim and making plays. And then, I mean, you know it, Jazz Shelley just absolutely clutched up for us in big moments. And that's just what she does for our team. But I think all around, like, I think you can go down the line. I think every single kid on our team made a big play that contributed to that win. So that's pretty special. Yeah, I was going to say, just everybody, you, you can't really point out one person. And now the people in double figures, the defensive stops, it just how special was it to come together in, in such a big moment to be able to get this win like this? Yes, I, I, I mean, we've talked about it a lot. Like, it, it takes everybody. Mm -hmm. um, and the season that we, we want to have, you know, the success that we want to reach this season, like, we know it's going to take everybody every single night. And I think um, we showed tonight what we're capable of the rest of the year. And I think that's really exciting um, for our team to see and just to enjoy this win, too. One person I did want to ask about Logan Nisley, like some of the big shots she hit for you guys, but then also her, her job on the on the board, some of her big rebounds. How big of a spark was she for you guys off the bench? Yeah. Oh my gosh, Logan was phenomenal. I think we kind of went through a little bit of a drought in the first half, and we really relied on her to kind of pick it up for us. And, you know, for a freshman, you know, that's a big thing. That's a big thing to ask of. And I think she just, she absolutely took over. And then, like you said, like big moments down the road, just rebounds, huge. And we told everybody, you know, that rebounding wins games, and it was going to take Every, all five on the court every single time to rebound down, to get the boards, one shot and done, you know, all of that. And I think Logan just really bought in. I think she has done that all year, and it just, you know, it shined tonight, and it was huge for us. Coach Williams always talks about getting those defensive stops, and, and that's not easy to do against a team like Iowa. But, boy, you guys locked in and, and got some big-time stops. What about the defensive effort tonight? How big was that? Oh, it was huge. I think, you know, we were locked in um, with our prep days, too, just scouting in general. I think, you know, everybody was aware going in what they were wanting to to do and um, making them do something else, something that they didn't want to do, making other kids kind of have to step up and score. And I, I mean, Kendall Coley kind of comes to mind. She just had an absolutely phenomenal game. She just made things tough with her length. And um, I, again, I could probably go down the line and name yeah. something every single person did. But yeah, defensively, I think we were just locked in the days leading up. And it really showed tonight that, you know, when they were trying to run stuff, we were taking it out, of, taking them out of it. So it was good. You just you look at women's basketball, and there's a court storming, and just how much growth there's been. There was a sellout today for the very first time, and but just to be able to be a part of it during this time, what does that mean to you? It's so special. I mean, seriously, I was a part, you know, of going to volleyball day here um, at. Uh, for our volleyball team and that was incredible and you know just wanting to continue to keep doing big things for all of our women's sports here in Nebraska but women's sports in general all over um, you know the country and I think that a court storm you know that's that's obviously been on my bucket list so <laughs> something that I can check off tonight. <laughs> What's going through your mind when Jazz puts up that three? Uh, nothing but net absolutely <laughs> I would never you know I every time we have jazz in the end of the game with the ball in her hands you know I have full faith in her she's proved to us so many times that we can rely on her and I mean it really was nothing but net and I know she's gonna hit it every single time and I love being her teammate not done yet right I mean you guys got a lot to play for coming up starting on Wednesday you got to close the chapter on this one at Ohio State so but how do you guys build off of this one what does this show you moving forward I, I think it's important that, you know, as we're going to celebrate this and enjoy this win, but obviously, you know, we got to get focused. The Big Ten Conference, you know, stops for nobody. Any team can get beat on any given night, and, you know, we've seen that, and we don't want, you know, to be that team, and we want to kind of build off this momentum um, that we had tonight, and I just think just keep moving forward. I still think there's plenty of things throughout this game that we can improve on going into Wednesday. Matty, appreciate it. Thank you so much. Uh, great stuff there from Maddie Crow. I was also kind of looking at that last photo and Sam Hybe in the background. And, oh, yeah. Uh, I chatted with her in the tunnel for a little bit and just how proud she is of this program. She, you know, she's a huge part for so many years for them to get this kind of win, to, to see the building packed. I know she was just unbelievably proud of this team. But, 
you know, just hearing what, what Maddie said, she pointed out Kendall Moriarty too, which which you brought her up, but the job that she did once she had to when they went to that junk defense, that's not an easy task. I would not want that assignment no. uh to, to face guard. That is another thing too that we should probably talk about. People were blowing up jazz for doing the it was their face guard yeah, signal. Right. And they were saying that it was the um, John Cena that caused the big uproar in the NCAA tournament last year. But if anybody would have been watching Amy that entire fourth quarter, she was doing it the whole time because that was her, that's their signal for their face guard right. defense, that junk junk defense. But it's it just people get so mad about they, everything these days. They do. Well, so you guys both mentioned Logan Nisley. She was a huge part of this game, the freshman. Uh, made some big jump shots for the Cornhuskers. She was another one you were able to catch up with after the game. With Logan Nisley, well, how much fun was that one? And, and the crowd rushing, all of that. Gosh, that's just something you dream of when you're a little kid. Like, you th dream about playing college basketball, and then you dream of those moments happening, and it's, it's so surreal, and this group deserves it. We work so hard day in and day out, and we love each other so much, and it's just awesome to be able to do it together. Yeah, that's what I was going to say. It was a total team effort. I mean, so many people made such key plays. How did you guys, how were you able to come together and put such together such a complete team performance? Yeah, we talk a lot about response, and we've talked a lot about it this week. We talked a lot about it this season, and I think our ability, we were down 14 in the fourth quarter, so our ability to cut up. Uh, keep getting stops and keep knocking down shots. I think it was a mix of things. Obviously, everybody did their job, and that's what we needed tonight. So you, you hit some big-time big, big time shots, but your rebounding today was just huge. What, what got into that? What, what was a part of that for you here tonight? Coach talked in the locker room, everybody needs to do their job, and I think that's something I bring to this team is that my ability to shoot it, but I think I can a very capable guard that's able to rebound, and that's something that we needed today. Obviously, our bigs are going to battle down there with Stokey and their bigs, and so being able to give my team extra possessions was huge. When you step up and, and knock down some of those big shots, what, what gives you that kind of confidence? My training. I've done this since I was a little girl. My dad and I shooting threes in the gym at 5.30 in the morning in middle school. And it's just, I just got chills. Oh my gosh, thinking about it. But yeah, I think we, we put in so much time. We work so hard in the gym and our coaches are in every day with us. On off days, they're in shooting. Like we just, we train so much for these moments and I think it just paid off. It really did. How about just the confidence too that your teammates have in you? Like, look like they were trying to get you the ball too. Yeah, it's crazy. As a freshman, I never expected to make this kind of impact, but I could not do it without them. My coaches, my teammates, my family, everybody, they're just, they have so much confidence in me and it's really hard not to have confidence in myself when that, those kind of people give me confidence. And so I just, I'm so thankful that I was able to knock down the shots for my team today and play defense and just do everything that my team needed. All right, what's going through your mind when Jazz puts up that shot for you guys to take the lead? That that is the one person every single day, every shot of the day that I want taking that shot. And just, I knew when my body was going in. It looked great right away, right when I left her hand. And so my only thing was get back in transition so they don't get a run out layup. But I just, I was screaming inside. Like I wanted to throw up so many threes in my hands. And, oh my gosh, it scared me. <laughs> but it was just incredible. Jazz is such an amazing leader and just a role model for me. I look up to her so much. And so I'm just so glad that, that she got that moment. You talked about at the beginning just how much you, you dreamed, you dream of like a moment like this, but for women's basketball to have a court storming, for you guys to do what you just did, I mean, how, how special is it for you to get to be a part of it? It's unreal. I honestly, like, I can't even explain it. Like, women's basketball has come so far, and just like seeing our men's players out there, like, jumping with us, and like, I don't know, <laughs> I'm gonna start crying, that's so weird. Um, just the, the support that everybody at this school gives us. We have so many fans and Husker Nation really showed out. And so like everybody's families was storming the court and it was just, it's unreal. I can't even explain it. Now you're making me cry. Congratul <laughs> Congratulations, Logan. Thank you, thank you. Such a great answer, but uh, boy, she was, she was monumental. Huge. Uh, you heard Maddie talking about it, just the, in the first half, they were having a little bit of a lull. And they, you know, what's crazy, Greg, they still didn't shoot it very well. I mean, at the end, they started, but in the first half, they didn't shoot it very no. well. So, you know, for them to be able to pull that off and to not have their best offensive performance from start to finish, um, you know, just shows you, too, that this, I think both teams will tell you that they're not even near close to peaking how good they could be, which, you know, you want to start heading towards that trajectory. You want to start trajecting that way now, but they're they're, they haven't peaked yet, which is uh, also pretty scary for teams on their schedule moving forward. Logan ended up with 15 in the game, seven rebounds, three of seven from behind the line. And, and that corner three that she hit was monumental in that comeback run in the fourth quarter. So great to hear from Logan Nisley. Hey, contact 811 two days before you dig to protect your underground utilities and yourself. It's free, it's easy. 
It's the law. We're back with more Sports Highlight coming up. This statement has not been evaluated by the FDA. This product is not intended to diagnose, treat, cure, or prevent any disease. When it comes to my lifestyle and diet, I don't always make the smartest choices. Touchdown! Woo! Hey, how about another round and some more chips? But when it comes to taking care of my liver, I do make one very smart choice. Active liver tablets from New Nordic. I used to have real issues with my liver, and at my last checkup, my doc was concerned about my numbers. But since adding a once-a-day active liver tablet, my gut's better, I feel great, and my doctor's happy. I ask a lot of my liver, so the least I can do to say thanks is a daily dose of active liver. Active liver is one of many award-winning health products from New Nordic, the number one supplier of dietary supplements in Scandinavia. Purchase at Amazon.com or for a volume discount, visit NewNordicUSA.com. Available as a tablet or delicious sugar-free gummy. Protect and help your liver the easy and effective way with active liver at Amazon or NewNordicUSA.com. For generations, hardworking people have relied on Ford F-Series trucks to help grow businesses, communities, families, a legacy of capability and technology that's made Ford F-Series America's best-selling trucks 47 years straight. This is the next generation of Built Ford Tough. Now, get 1.9% financing for 72 months on a new 2023 Ford F-150 only at your Midwest Ford dealers. Hit us up on the text line. Text 402-413-2400 with your Husker thoughts. Woodhouse has got you covered for your next car, truck, or SUV. We are committed to making the car buying and owning experience better thanks to our knowledgeable sales staff and factory certified technicians. You can discover our large inventory of new and pre-owned vehicles anytime at woodhouse.com where we have made buying a car easier than ever. Whether you need a family hauling SUV, a car to take you around town, or a hardworking truck, Woodhouse has something for everyone. Hey Huskers, it's a new day in Nebraska. Manzer Equipment, Mertz Farm Equipment, and West Point Implement of Columbus have teamed up as True Ag and Turf. Coach Rule is bringing innovation and high performance standards to Husker football, and True Ag is doing the same to your farm with game changing Fent equipment. As Big Red establishes power on the field, True Ag and Turf does the same in the field by welcoming Fent to Nebraska. Hi, this is Husker National Champion and Super Bowl champ Tony Veland. Throughout my football career, chiropractic care helped my athletic performance on the field and kept me in the game. Today, regular chiropractic care keeps me healthy and active to do the things I love. Chiropractic is safe and effective for all ages. Make chiropractic your first choice to reduce pain, improve your mobility, and feel better naturally. It works for me, and it can work for you too. Learn more at NebraskaChiropractic.org. Stay active with chiropractic. Get ready again for some Nebraska farm facts. When there's work to be done, Nebraska soybeans are on the job in many of your everyday products. In fact, Nebraska soybeans are hard at work in Goodyear tires, Ford cars and trucks, Skechers shoes, asphalt, fuels, lubricants, name brand paints and stains, and more. Soybeans are an innovative replacement for petroleum, leading to more sustainable products all over the world. This message is brought to you by Nebraska Soybean Farmers, growing opportunity from the ground up. Get ready to rule the field and revolutionize your farming game with Valley, the game changer in irrigation and ag tech solutions. With time and labor saving measures, ground truthing results and effective input reduction, Valley provides the perfect game plan so you stay ahead of what's in the field. From the best in irrigation and cutting edge ag tech solutions to personalized support, Valley is your winning team. Visit your local Valley dealer or valleyirrigation.com today. For generations, hardworking people have relied on Ford F-Series trucks to help grow businesses, communities, families, a legacy of capability and technology that's made Ford F-Series America's best-selling trucks 47 years straight. This is the next generation of Built Ford Tough. Now, get 1.9% financing for 72 months on a new 2023 Ford F-150 only at your Midwest Ford dealers. Back inside our Huskers Radio Network Broadcast Center, sponsored by Acres, the Midwest premier John Deere dealer, supplying the equipment and service to advance agriculture and much more. Acres, solutions for every field. Greg Sharp, Jessica Cootie with you on a Monday night. 
This should be a national holiday. Today should be a holiday for everybody. The day after the Super Bowl, we should all get to take the day off from work. I feel like you make that plea every year, and then nobody's really listening to you. So I mean, think about how late that game went last night. People had to get up. And usually, you're kind of lit a little bit. Lit? Look at you. Um, yeah, and especially the overtime, and then you're amped up about that. So yeah, but heck hey, of a game, right? Yes. Heck of a game, and also really enjoyed the halftime performance. Too. I thought I it was really good. Did I really thought, good. Yeah, and then the cameos from Alicia, Alicia Keys, Keys and Luda, Ludacris. Lil John, and yeah. and her, and yeah, it was. I'm, I enjoyed it. I thought it was a really, really good game. Randy Gregory did some nice things. He, he had either a TFL or a sack. Almost got a blocked field goal. So happy for Randy to have a good game in that one. Did you did you check out the commercials, or do you get up and walk away when they go to commercial? I watched a lot of them. Um, I missed a few of them, but um, there are some clear favorites for me in my mind. Like. Okay, well, I was a big fan of the Dunkin' Donuts. Me too. Love with, it. With uh, Ben Affleck and Matt Damon and Tom Brady and um, How about J Lo. J Lo's like Tom, you can stay. Yeah, yeah you can stay. <laughs> you go. You, you can say Tom. I great. liked I liked the Doritos commercial with the old ladies that were fighting to get the Doritos bag, the last bag. I, th I thought that was kind of funny. Yeah. And I'm I'm a softie just because I think of the nostalgia and the history of the the Clydesdales and the dogs in the Budweiser commercial. So. I know that that probably wasn't on a lot because it wasn't like it was. It didn't make you cry, and it didn't. But it's just I think that they were back. The nostalgia. It's been and, years since we've seen yeah, the Clydesdales. Yeah. So the and then the fact that the dog comes up and says, "Hey, this way," because they say they can't see. I, I I enjoyed that one because again, you you that's kind of a Super Bowl staple in my mind, and the fact that it returned to me that was that I, that meant a lot. Were you a fan of the Arnold Schwarzenegger State Farm playoff? Um, I don't remember that. You don't one, remember actually. that one? No. I, I, it, to me, it was okay. I'm with you. The number one for me was Dunkin' Donuts. Well, Camden found USA Today put out their top 56 commercials. What did they have at the top of the list uh, for them? They had State Farm with so, the one with Arnold. Arnold. Yep. I th it was okay. Uh, it was fine. Okay. What about number two? They had the Dunkin' one. Yes. The one you guys liked. Okay. Keep going. Uh, the third one um, was Perfect 10. Um, it was a Kia commercial. I don't remember that one, though. I don't, I don't remember that. Do you I remember that? Mm -mm. Kia commercial? You know, the one, it's always funny, too, because, like, even if they're not your favorite or you're not, they're good, they're not, or they're good or bad, just the ones that you remember. The ones, the one that was the party in the front. Oh, yeah. The business in the front, party in the back, yeah. that, whatever that, um, I don't know, four-wheeler type thing was. Like, that... To me, I, it's not like I, it was a favorite. It just like kind of stuck out in my mind, like one of the ones that I remembered. Okay, what, what, what else? Well, speaking of remembering, it was oh, the yeah. worth remembering one from yeah. Uber Eats. Yeah, J Jennifer oh, Aniston. Yes, yes. Where David Sh is a swimmer, comes up to her and goes, yeah. you "Don't you remember me?" I know I don't remember you. And they, we were, we did a TV show together for ten years. Yes. No, I don't remember you. <laughs> that was pretty clever. Yeah. And then the born to play ones, the NFL produced commercial. That was cool. The little kid mm -hmm. whose name was like Osa or something like that. Yeah, that was a bit of a tearjerker. Yeah. And then there was Hard Knocks. It was a Dove Super Bowl film. So the Dove one. Yeah, I remember that one. That one was stuck out to me too, just to get inspiring girls to stick in sports. Mm -hmm. So yeah, that one. That one was pretty powerful. And seventh, they had Talkin' Like Walkin'. That's a BMW commercial. Yeah, where they were all acting like him. Famous lines that he gave in movies. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and he got so tired of it. He's like driving, he's sitting down for coffee, and somebody gives one of his own lines. That was pretty clever. Eighth was the Budweiser one. Oh, there you go. Made top ten. Yep. And then ninth was the Verizon one with Beyonce. Can't be broken. I kind of remember it. Did she announce like a new album or something? I think so. With that commercial? Yeah. Okay. And I remember then, seeing it, but yeah. And then tenth, they had the Doritos one. Yeah. Would you like that? I thought it was pretty funny. Yeah. How about the couch potatoes? Was that like for Fubo TV or something like that? Like, or they were like a bunch of this. They were all like, at like an outdoor movie, but they were all sitting on the couches and they were all potato heads. That was kind of yeah. Clever. It was Pluto number twenty nine on their list. Okay, I was way down. What the was list. your favorite? I thought the couch potato one was clever. Uh, the Popeyes one was pretty funny too. I thought. Yeah, we're, with the um, wings. Ken, 
Ken Young or what's yeah. his name? Yeah, basically they were, they have wings. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, that's the thing. That's where, do you remember it, right? Yeah. And, and that's where I think even if we're going through this, is it the best or the worst? But what, what are the ones you remember are the ones to me that you hit your mark mm -hmm. in the, when you're paying what? How much what did you say it was? It was seven million for a 30 second spot, wow. I think. Unbelievable. How about that? All right. So uh, are they a dynasty? Uh, uh, are the Chiefs a dynasty? I think so. I think you got to say they're right there. Three Maybe out of if, if you are either playing for a Super Bowl or in a Super Bowl next year, I don't know. How, there's no way you can say they're not. And now he's got three rings at the age of 28. Brady didn't get his fourth till 37. I, I go back to what um, Jason Kelsey said after they had, um, you know, clinched the spot in the Super Bowl about how the camaraderie in the locker room and how, um, you know, those are usually the teams that do the best and that's why they continue to win even despite, right. you know, despite people doubting them, despite them having their ups and downs, how do they come together in the end? And to me that obviously seems to set them apart is, is how close-knit that locker room is. But it just... And, and also, then you can, here comes the storylines of how the Chiefs had practiced that, the, the overtime rules, and the and 49ers they had not. Yeah. And they, I mean, the Chiefs just marched right down the, road, right down the field. They knew that that play call was, and, and Mahomes was given all kinds of credit to Andy Reid for pulling out that play call. They hadn't used it in a while. Just that they, they just knew. They, were, they knew that they were going to win at that point because they were so confident in that moment. It just, that's what separates teams in that, on those big stages. And now they've been there enough, they just know how to elevate it and breathe easier and do those type of things. I had a guy today tell me that the Brady Mahomes comparisons now Tiger versus Jack. Wow. That Mahomes may not get to 7 like Brady had, but Brady never had a stretch this good. Kind of like Tiger, Jack never dominated for a couple of years like Tiger did, but it was a shorter window. So, interesting. What, what's your argument? Is no, it, I think that's pretty close. I, I mean, but it, is it more impressive to do the, the more success in the shorter window or the longer career? Well, the longer career is amazing. I'm not sure that'll ever happen again. I, and Mahomes won't play till he's 42, it, I don't it, think. And I, he won't need to or want to, I don't think. I don't either. I, I think Tom Brady wanted to and didn't want to walk away, but I think Patrick Mahomes has got, you know, a, a lot going on where I, I don't think he's a guy that wants to play that I long. don't think so either. Brady's just a different animal to play that long, and that longevity is what got him all those rings. Cannon, thank you. You got a winner for the next segment? I do. All right. We're going to do win weekend winners coming up. Woodhouse Auto Family, they are your trusted auto partner, 20 brands, 20 convenient sales and service locations. We're making car buying on your terms. Visit us online at woodhouse.com. Back with our weekend winners next. Start your next journey with Woodhouse. Our commitment extends beyond just selling cars. We offer an unparalleled car buying experience that allows you to shop and buy all online. Explore an array of new brands, makes, and models, as well as our large selection of pre-owned vehicles. And it's easy to get started today with our streamlined purchasing process online, granting you the freedom to secure your next vehicle anytime, anywhere. Discover a better way to buy with Woodhouse. Don't miss out on limited-time appliance deals during the closeout event at Lowe's. Get up to 35% off select major appliances. Plus, save an extra $100 when you spend $999 or more on all major appliances. Hurry, these deals are too good to last long. Shop in-store or online today because Lowe's knows home improvement. Valid 1-4 through 124. Selection varies by location. While supplies last, see Lowe's.com for details. Hit us up on the text line. Text 402-413-2400 with your Husker thoughts. Farming today is a combination of hard work, innovation, and partnerships to help keep us moving forward. Sap Brothers Petroleum has provided us with fuel, propane, and lubricants on the farm for many years. For over 52 years, Sap Brothers has been a reliable partner to thousands of farmers across our great state. We work hard to make sure our customers have the most reliable supply, provided in the safest manner and at the most competitive price. Trust Sap Brothers Petroleum to protect your equipment and keep your farm fueled. Sap Brothers is proud to be an official partner of Huskers Athletics and to serve Nebraska farmers and Husker fans across America's heartland. Hey mom, yeah, I got in a crash. I'm okay, I was wearing my seatbelt. 
People count on you to buckle up. Brought to you by the NDOT Highway Safety Office. We are back inside our Huskers Radio Network Broadcast Center, sponsored by Acres, the Midwest's premier John Deere dealer, supplying the equipment and service to advance agriculture and much more Acres solutions for every field. Time for our weekend winners. I'm going to start with David. David, what do you have on your list? All right, so starting in the wrestling world, I think Nebraska did fantastic this weekend against Michigan. They won 25 to 7, and you know, specifically for Brock Hardy, he was actually down going into period three against Lemley from Michigan, but he was down eight to six, but then he only allowed one point and scored seven to win 13 to nine for his fourth consecutive win. So I think that's pretty impressive. Sure is. Would you say like five of the first six matches were one point or something? Yeah, I think it's like four of four of nine or five. Yeah, crazy. Four of seven. Four of seven were a point or less. Wow. Or point. And but you know those to his point, the first five weight classes. I mean, those could have gone either way, and they even probably Michigan were heavily favored in, yep. and the way that. Nebraska came out and dominated from the start. That was definitely an impressive win. And Michigan, sure by the way, just had knocked off Iowa. Iowa. Yeah, big upset. All right, what do you have? I, I, I got to go with Jazz Shelley. Um, 23 points, hits the, the go-ahead three with ice in her veins. Like, and, and just going back to what the, her teammates had said, they obviously practiced that. It was not a circus shot. It was a, she took that with confidence. Like She knew that she could knock it down. And for her to get going again, but just all the things that go along with them knocking off Iowa, just a big win on the resume, and you know, in front of a sellout crowd, which is what Amy talked about when she brought Jazz on. Hey, we're going to sell this thing out one day. There's so many cool storylines, but but Jazz Shelley at lifting the Huskers to a win over Iowa. Good, Camden. Um, I'm going to go with someone from the track and field team, um, Lincoln East and Lincoln, Nebraska's own Berlin Schutz. Um, She's a star. She broke the mile record for Nebraska with a 437.45 down in Fayetteville, Arkansas at the Tyson Invitational. She's phenomenal. She won a couple of cross-country meets in the fall, and then she got some shin splints, which really hurt her performance in the postseason. I think Nebraska would have finished much better in the team in the Big Ten uh, cross-country meet if she'd been healthy. I watched the end of that race mm -hmm. down in Fayetteville. It was an Arkansas runner who had the lead on her going to the final lap, and the announcer's like, oh, this is going to be a great lap, and then Berlin just hit the pedal and just blitzed her by one by 20 yards or so. So a terrific race. She is a budding star for that track and field squad. We need to talk to her. I know. I need to get her on the list. There's, the list is growing. Camden had a couple of suggestions for me, too, for Husker Women's Wednesday. There's so many women doing amazing things around I here. I mean, she winning two cross-country. Cross-country meets are hard to win. kind of like golf tournaments. They're hard to win, and she won a couple of those uh, in, in the fall. All right, well, got to be the Kansas City Chiefs, right? I mean, come on. Another Super Bowl win for them. Patrick Mahomes, another MVP. Terrific game, overtime game. Only the second Super Bowl, I think, to go to overtime. Is that right? Yep. So, I mean, just a great game, kept her vibe. Not seen any TV numbers today. I was looking for that earlier, but I'm sure it was close to 100 million or so that watched that game. And the football season, other than the UFL and those type of things, is over till August. Kind of sad because uh, well, the next thing we'll be, we'll obviously have spring football to uh, describe around here, but that's not the real thing. So, there we go. Tomorrow night, we believe we're going to talk to that football coach. Nice. And President Kaborik will be here as well. So, a couple of big hitters. Yeah, we got a fun week ahead. We Lots do. Lots of great content. Full, uh, full two hours tomorrow. No show Wednesday because the women play Ohio State, so only a, a full show tomorrow. And then a full show Thursday, Amy Williams will be here in studio. Yep, she will be here. So, we'll have uh, lots to talk about with Coach Williams. Fantastic. Thanks to David and to Camden, all of you, for listening here tonight. Uh, busy weekend, busy week coming up. We're into the crossover seasons. The ball bat sports are now underway. So, we're staying busy here at the network. Have yourself a great night. We're back with you tomorrow. Good night. Hit us up on the text line. Text 402-413-2400 with your Husker thoughts. Did I forget something? No, just wanted to tell you I love you. Oh, don't forget to buckle up. Drive safe. I will. Love you too. 
Someone is counting on you to buckle up. Paid for by the NDOT Highway Safety Office. At Groundworks, we take great pride in helping our Nebraska neighbors keep their homes healthy. From repairing foundations to waterproofing basements to fixing crawl spaces or lifting concrete driveways. We'd like to think our customers choose us because of our attention to detail or the fact that we're the nation's leading foundation solutions provider. What gives our customers the most comfort is we're right here in Nebraska. Visit Groundworks.com for a free estimate. Groundworks, foundation solutions crafted with pride the official foundation company of the Huskers. I just remember leaving that day feeling absolutely exhausted. I was sick and tired of living that double life. Mike is a former problem gambler. The anxiety, the depression is real. You start thinking about the money, the, where that could have went to. It's never enough. I could win $10 million today, and I'd go back and try to win 20 tomorrow. Help for problem gambling is free for Nebraskans and their families at lifeafterbet.com. Hey Huskers, it's a new day in Nebraska. Manzer Equipment, Mertz Farm Equipment, and West Point Implement of Columbus have teamed up as True Ag and Turf. Coach Rule is bringing innovation and high performance standards to Husker football, and True Ag is doing the same to your farm with game-changing Fent equipment. As Big Red establishes power on the field, True Ag 